Kaya, and welcome to Psychic Connections. I know absolutely nothing about this game. Except Pretty Lights. Which, I tried to match the lights in my room, in where I am. I tried to match the lights with this, and I feel like... You said that there's an SFW, and I'm freaking out, but... We're, I'm going to have to use my my strategy of reading the room. <laughs> I am a fucking idiot. Anyways, let's just hop right in. It feels like I've been driving forever. It's so dark. I can't afford to stop. Could you even see? I can't let myself you were so tired if i could just oh shit god damn that is one hell of a start that is a hell of a start <laughs> That is certainly a start. I'm not too worried about uh, the lack of updates, because to be honest, until yesterday, I didn't even know this game existed. I'm going to turn on the sensor just to be safe. I jolt to awake in a sweat, gasping for air. It was just a dream. It's been a while since I had a nightmare about back then. From what I had been told, it, I was in a car wreck that landed me in a coma for almost two years. Oh, shit. When I finally came to, my memory was spotty at best. As time went on, most of what I'd forgotten came back to me. Meanwhile, I underwent about six months of grueling physical therapy. It was hell, but I rathered that over an extended period in a wheelchair. Thankfully, I was able to get my high school diploma throughout the entire process. With some help, my dad was able to set me up for a college scholarship as a result of my situation. I'm still not sure how I feel about being a charity case, but I don't think I could have expected a full ride anywhere with my grades. Oh, thank you for the raid! Thank you for the raid, Axel. Now I've completely recovered, save for a scar on the back of my head and nightmares that I barely remember when waking up. Oh, okay. I'm- I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. I will- I will scream. I will scream if there is a wiener that pops up on screen. I am going to scream. Now I've completely recovered, save for a scar on the back of my head and nightmares that I barely remember when I wake up. I've officially started college today. The stress of it all is probably why I had that dream again. Oh, that's okay. I was barely awake for orientation yesterday. The trip took too much out of me, so I just crashed when I got to my room. I should probably check the time. 10.09. I definitely won't miss waking up early for high school. It doesn't look like I have any new messages from Dad. No surprise there. You'd think he'd have been more worried about his baby boy. Unsurprisingly, it didn't take long for him to return to being a relatively uninvolved parent. The least he could do is tell me if I need to get a freaking job while I'm out here. Now that I'm a bit more awake, I should probably log into the website mentioned at orientation. Looks like I need to create an account still. Should have done this yesterday. Oh no. Oh well. No time like the present. Default first name. Default Mason. Obviously, we're gonna have to come up with a super with a super complex name. We're going to have to come up with a super complex name. Obviously, the best complex. Oh, I can't. I can't do the joke. I can't do the joke. I can't do the joke. Damn it! I'm gonna do the joke. This bastard writes Roswell X June Kobayashi fan fiction because I do. <laughs> 
but I can't. I can't. There's a character limit. <laughs> There's a character limit. If visual novel devs, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> You're providing me from making a joke, and I love it. I, I could not. I, little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> this is glorious Mason, yeah we're going with Mason Last name, Carters What does the character look like? Yeah Wow, they already have all my classes listed into a schedule I barely even remember what I signed up for It looks like I have an English class in a few hours Oh, we're cute. We are cute. I probably should censor. I should probably turn on the censor. But I'm not going to. Jeez, I'm getting flooded with sprunk page notifications. I guess one of my friends posted an update. It seems like Henry is doing pretty good at his school. Holy fuck, I've seen this novel before. Oh, cool. He was the only one to reach out to me after I'd woken up. I guess the others felt too awkward to message the coma guy. I was pretty thankful to have him help me catch up on everything I'd missed. I wish I could have gone to his school so that I'd have someone nearby, but we ended up on opposite ends of the country. So I can't really lean on him where I am. He's a junior now, and I'd probably be one too if not for... I flopped my phone back down onto my bed. Letting my eyes stare lazily up at the bare ceiling. My, my bare ceiling. It all still feels so surreal. In what had felt like seconds, my entire life changed. Mom and dad had split and all my friends left while I slept. Friends. It feels so strange not having anyone. I don't know if I can do the... Someone's at the door? Huh. Guess I better put on some pants and leave the existential crisis stuff for later. Relatable. Not even ten minutes in. And that's so relatable. Shuffling my jeans on, I move to open the door, but okay, it's no longer relatable. A uh, hi. Hi there. Oh, hey there. You're Mason, right? Uh, can I help you? I'm almost positive I've never seen this girl before, and I don't know how she has a key to my room, but I'm glad I at least got to put pants on before she opened the door. My name's Zoe. I'm the RA for this floor, just doing my duties and making sure you're moved in all right. Zoe brushes past me, letting herself into my room and begins looking around. Yes, please, just let yourself in. Don't mind if I do. We were being sarcastic. She could definitely turn any gay man straight. I'm a gay man, and I'm not straight, just by looking at her. I'm still a, little gr I'm still a bit groggy, so I could be wrong, but I don't think she's allowed to just waltz into my room like this. Looks like you lucked out not getting assigned a roommate. Still a little empty though, ain't it? I stare at her blankly. I just got here. Did she expect me to have this place decked out or something? She looks at my desk and pats it off as if to dust it before using it as a seat. Rather than the chair right next to the desk. Hey, it's your room. Don't sweat it. I'm just pulling your leg. College is a huge step. Don't stress too much and go at your own pace. Since I'm here, do you have any questions for me? Right. She's a resident assistant. She'd likely know a lot about the campus. Uh, which one? What is there to do around here? How does one become an RA? What programs are you studying in? What's your credit card information? What's your mother's maiden name? What's your social security number? Just kidding. No questions. None of those questions. Do not ask those questions ever. Seems like we can do all of them. Do you do drugs? What is there to do around here? Hmm. Well, on campus there are a couple spots worth your time. The library is probably the ideal study location. They enforce a strict low volume policy. You mean they do more than loudly shush people? Ha! <laughs> Let's just say if you need to check out books for a class or use the media center to print something. 
I recommend staying on the librarian's good side. Girl, I was kind of friends with the li- Girl. I was friends with the librarians. <laughs> just, just shut the hell up. That's it. That's it, just don't fucking talk. I question what someone would have to do to justify banning them from using an open school resources like the library. But considering the RAs can just let themselves into dorm rooms, I shouldn't question something like that either. I'll keep that in mind. There are a few open plots of grass and a couple good running trails all around campus if you're an outdoorsy type. Although, if you do prefer to exercise inside, I'm told we have a pretty good gym. It's usually pretty comfortable most of the time, but it gets packed in the winter months. There is a variety of equipment, and there are some vending machines with low-calorie snacks and supplements. Speaking of food, I think they said something about a dining hall at orientation. Yeah. Though, if I'm being honest, I can't recommend the food there. You'd honestly be better off getting food from literally anywhere else. Pizza. Pizza. Little Caesars pizza. Hot and ready pizza. 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 Little Caesars pizza. Hot and ready pizza. You'd honestly be better off getting food from literally anywhere else. It can't be that bad? Well, one of the chefs on staff is very eccentric. He likes to experiment with the meals. Oh, fuck! Shoichi got a job at the cafeteria. Oh, shit. Run for your lives. <laughs> Just like, oh, what's in this chicken noodle soup? Oh, it's fucking coffee grounds and slug. Why is this chicken pink? Oh, it's raw. Why the fuck did you serve raw chicken? Because it's good for your... Because it's good for vitality. It's also good at killing you. That's how you get a disease. Don't fucking eat raw chicken. That shit can kill you. Can we ask if there are any gay bars or gay man here? Are you gay man? <laughs> Don't think the experiment with food is that bad. It, it's bad. Shoichi is awful. But if you don't believe me, you're free to experience it yourself. Just make sure you record it for me if you do. Never eat any type of meat raw. Have you never had rare steak? Granted, I haven't. It's been a while. Well, no, I have. But it's been a while. Just eat rare steak. Let's make sure you record it for me if you do. Personally, I recommend you explore the campus. I don't know much about you, so I can't really speak to where you'd like to go. How does one become an RA? Oh, are you interested in being an RA? I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not even really sure what an RA does. Raw meat is universally unhealthy. Yeah, it can kill you, but like, why is it? That if it can kill you, it tastes good. Like, fucking, I'm aware. I shouldn't fucking eat, I don't know, fucking. Don't take this out of context. I'm aware that I shouldn't eat the Little Debbie cake known as Ding Dongs. I'm aware I shouldn't. But they're fucking delicious. So, like, shit that tastes good is, it can kill you. Also, sushi, I, I have had sushi. I have had sushi. I don't like it. Sushi just isn't for me. It, it just isn't for me. I'm not a fan of it. Very weird texture. It's a weird texture and taste. It's just, it's just not for me. Tide Pods, do not fucking eat Tide Pods. You will die. Instantly. 
you will die instantly. And if you die, no more muscly wolfmen. Because you'll be dead. I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not even really sure what an RA does. But I'm growing more positive. You shouldn't have been able to get into my room. To be honest, it isn't anything special. We maintain dorm life and try to assist students with their needs while they live on campus. <clears throat> to simplify, we clean the dormitory building and make sure none of the students have any banned substances. <clears throat> I'd also be your point of contact if you got too inebriated at a party and didn't have a sober driver. <clears throat> Have you ever had to do that before? Only for students that didn't have any other friends to call. How about chicken with NyQuil? How about no? If you're interested in being an RA, I can tell you now that you won't be able to become one. Why not? It's a position only held by upperclassmen, so I'm afraid you need you need to be here at least a year. Freshy! Something about being called a freshie feels demeaning. Though maybe it's because I'm having trouble looking at Zoe as my upperclassman. What program are you studying in? Neat. Well, I'm a business major with a to-be-determined minor. I'm hoping to take over my dad's business when he retires, and it seems like a good place to start. What kind of business does he run? It's a sort of support group for individuals with unique need needs. I suppose it's a part of the reason I picked up being an RA, so I could get more experience interacting with different people. What about you? What are you here to study? I'm not too sure yet. I figured I'd cover my general education credits while I figured that out. There's nothing wrong with that. You're keeping your options open, which is smart. Just don't be that dumb junior in two years that declares a random major because it seems doable. We have no more questions. Well, if you think of more questions, don't be afraid to ask. It's my job, after all. Hmm. Well, you're my last stop today. Zoe motions towards the exit, but she pauses and turns to look straight at me. Is there something wrong? No, just, you have interesting eyes. Is she hitting on me? If so, I'm flattered, but she's sort of lacking the main things I like in a guy. Like being a guy. Um, thanks. Hey, here's a thought. Why don't you come check out the club fair with me? I beg your pardon? Yeah, it's this big cluster of clubs that try to recruit new members during the first week of each semester. A whole week? Isn't that a little much? Probably. I'm sure you'll find that a lot of people here take their extracurriculars seriously. I'm not so sure. I just got here. And I don't know if joining some club the moment I hit campus is the smartest thing. It can be pretty overwhelming, so I thought I could be your tour guide. Trust me. It's a lot of fun and a great opportunity to meet people, too. Why would you want to be my tour guide? Why does anybody do anything ever? I'm always looking for new friends, and plus, you're pretty funny, so I think I'd have a good time hanging out with you. You think I'm funny? I don't remember making any jokes. That's because you're kinetically funny, and you don't even realize it. I'm kinetically funny? What does that even mean? It means the things you do are funny rather than the things you say. Like, for example, your fly has been down this entire time. Well, thank you for that information. You'll tell no, you won't. If you need me, I am going to go control alt delete my existence. Ah. Next time we answer the door, booty butt naked for Ryan. I quickly looked down and lo and behold, and lo and, I quickly looked down and lo and behold, my fly is not only undone, but gaping open as if to encourage peeking at my choice of underwear. I grab the zipper and yank it upward. I look up at the panda before me who just snickers. We've been talking for a few minutes and she's pointed out? See, you're kinetically funny. 
Plus, I hate it when people stay cooped up in their dorm rooms all day when they could be out living life. Like, really? What is there to do inside that you couldn't do with others? This. <laughs> I can think of one thing, but after what just happened, I probably shouldn't make that joke, assuming she isn't already thinking that's what I was doing. Zoe is looking at me expectantly, and it couldn't hurt to go check out the extracurricular activities. Ah! And I don't exactly have a reason to say no here. I guess it'd be fine. Awesome! You are get it. Let's get going. In a blink of an eye, she's yanking my arm, pulling me out of my room towards the stairs. It's not until she starts telling me about, about when she'd gotten lost last week that I started questioning my life choices. This is going to be a long day. The walk to the fair was pretty short. Zoe kept telling me more about campus life and things to look out for. I swear to God, if, there, if there's a tennis club, I'm going to scream. Seriously, frat parties are the worst. By the end of it, everyone's completely shit-faced. Not to mention any guys you meet there are just trying to get in your pants. Really? All of them? Theta gives Zoe the Chelsea voice PLS. Sad okay, I'll face. try it, Sad but like, face. The, the voice that I, I'm currently giving her sounds right. Really? All of them? No, not all of them, but most of the people I've met at those things were just looking for a quick hookup. That doesn't sound right. I'm, I'm sorry that doesn't sound right. No, not all of them. But most of the people I've met at those things were just looking for a quick hookup. Zoe stops for a brief moment and begins looking around us. In an instant, she's running towards one of the tables. I'm standing awkwardly as I watch her go. Yeah, it is it is funny. It's a good voice. It's a funny voice, but it just doesn't always work. It's very situational. I'm standing awkwardly as I watch her go. Should I have followed her or... Hey, Mason, get over here. I want you to meet somebody. Well, hello, Aiden. This is Mason. He's a new student, so I thought I'd guide him through the club fair. I need a... What voice should I give him? What voice should I give him? Hmm. hmm. I don't want to give him Blake's voice. Well, let's try it. I see. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mason. No, no, no. Hmm. Not deep voice. Calm, gentle, but also deep. I see. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mason. The wolf before me extends his hand outward, and I give him mine in turn. His grip is firm, almost stiff. I look him in the eyes, and his gaze meets mine. I don't know if I've ever met someone with more piercing eyes. Aiden here is the president of the student government, and probably the most knowledgeable person here. Zoe says this proudly, looking at Aiden. I'd say he looks the part. He almost looks princely somehow. Though that might just be because his clothes look like they might be worth more than my phone. While I'm sure that's true, I don't think it's fair to boast, given my status. The Blake or the Max voice. I'm trying to remember that one. I don't think it's fair to boast, given my status. His eyes return their focus on me, but somehow, it feels like he isn't necessarily looking at me, but through me. I hope Zoe hasn't been giving you a hard time. She has a tendency to go overboard. <laughs> ha! He said, what? I know what you mean or not at all. But choose the first one. Yeah, I know what you mean. She let herself into my room, gawked at my fly being down, and was pretty insistent on guiding me to this club fair, so he isn't wrong. She's definitely a force. Uh, of that, I'm certain. Uh, it seems we might be like-minded individuals, but don't let her get to you. I've known Zoe for a few years now. She usually means well. If she ever becomes too much, just let me know. I'll give her a stern talking to. 
that sounds so wrong. I'll definitely keep that in mind. No, no, no. The last thing you were supposed to, supposed to bond over was my faults. Ah, Zoe, I almost forgot you were here. <laughs> Aiden, my guy. You're telling Zoe to get fucked. Damn. My apologies. That was very rude of me. Aiden, stop being a bully. Do you think I was going to treat you today? Out of the kindness of your heart, I can't believe I never noticed how generous you were, Zoe. Not sure what I would have done if you hadn't paid for my coffee today. Why? I'd likely have gotten mad. I'm sure you didn't have an ulterior motive for trying to get on my good side today either. Well, now that I now that you mention it, I just remembered I'd promised to help the acapella team set up their table. So, I'm sure you wouldn't mind showing Mason around while I do that. Zoe doesn't even give Aiden a chance to protest. She bolts off deeper into the fair, disappearing into the labyrinth of makeshift stands and people. Wait. Did I seriously get did get dragged out of my room by someone I just met, only only to get ditched and left in the care of a complete stranger? I need to start reevaluating the choices the choices I make that put me in these situations. She's acting worse than last year. Sorry about her. As I said, she's a bit all over the place. Aiden sighs, but it isn't but it isn't a normal sigh. It's time Rather, to drink water. It's the sigh of a broken it's man. It's time to drink water. <laughs> it's time to drink water. Fucker sighed like he got a mortgage. It's time to drink water. Fucker sighed like he has a goddamn mortgage. It's the sigh of a broken man forced into similar situations on a regular basis. I pity him. It's time for my break anyway. So how about I show you around? Are you really sure you want to spend your break doing more work? It's fine. I need to stretch my legs anyway. Besides, it would be very unbecoming of me to not support my juniors. Aiden proceeds to guide me through the fair. Occasionally, we stop at a table and I'd learn a bit more about some of the clubs. He's pretty knowledgeable when it comes to the involvement and reputation of the various clubs, though that probably comes with being the student government president. So we've looked at quite a few so far. Any of them catch your interest? I'm not sure. Some of these guys seem a bit... Extra. Are you sure none of these are actually cults in disguise? You must watch too many movies. Some of the students are just overzealous in their recruiting methods. If there was a cult at the school, I think I'd know. Clearly, this fucker has never been... Clearly, this fucker has never, ever been to a choir or any sort of in-school music program because that shit's a fucking cult any performing arts any performing arts in a school environment is a cult and that is a fact that is not an opinion that is not an over that is not overstating something that is a scientific fact it is a cult A theater shit? Star knows what the fuck I'm talking about. Theater shit? What do we do? We worshipped the director. Back in high school. High school band? The fucking worshipped the director. It's, it's all a cult. So no, Aiden, you wouldn't know. Because it's a fucking cult. Excuse me, do you two have a moment? Uh, sure. Great, I'm currently looking for new members for our club. Opening Personalized Emotions Network, or open for short. Those are words. We seek to connect with like-minded individuals and finding their inner selves. We shed mortal boundaries in our quest towards enlightenment. You were saying, Aiden? You were saying that you don't have a fucking cult. That is a fucking cult. No, I will not join your club, and no, I do- I would not enjoy ascending mortal boundaries- <laughs> Not enjoy ascending mortal boundaries to be on an alien spaceship or some shit. I don't- I don't fucking know. But no, I would not like to join your cult. 
what exactly does that entail? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. We actually have several information guides on our activities if you're interested. The student hands me a pamphlet detailing several retreats in which members find themselves to remove all doubt from their existence. Oh! Oh, it's that kind of cult. Um, I'm not sure this is for me, but thank you. I understand. Keep the brochure in case you change your mind. So you're sure they aren't, uh, just, just stop. Let's check out the culinary team's table. <laughs> Even he knows they're a cult. Even he knows they're a cult. Right after he just said that none of them are a cult, he witnessed a cult. Let's just check out the culinary team's table. Aiden leads me over to a line of people chattering away at each other. I could, I count at least a dozen people in front of us. I'm not exactly interested in cooking, though. Maybe we can skip this one and check out a table without a line. <laughs> Don't worry. I doubt anyone in this line is interested in joining the culinary team either. Then why? The culinary team sells samples of their work in an effort to entice people while also raising funds. So we're just in line to get a bite. Exactly. Jason, the head of the team, made these roasted dumplings last year that were just to die for. The conversation between us naturally ends and an awkward silence replaces it as we wait in line. The smell wafting from the table up front is beyond enticing. Aiden wasn't kidding about how good the food they, was, they were serving was. Looking at the wolf next to me, it dawns on me that we've been wandering for a while now, and I still don't really know anything about him. He's mostly just talked about the school so far and elaborated the, on the history of some of the clubs. It's He's very kind for giving me this tour, even if it was more or less shoved on him by Zoe. I feel like I should be asking more about him, but I don't even know where to start. I've never had much luck when it comes to talking to attractive guys. So, Zoe seems to have taken quite the interest in you. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. See, here's the thing. If I want to be able to do the voice properly, it's it's a lot quieter. And I think it suits him, like, being quieter. So, Zoe seems to have taken quite the interest in you. Huh? Oh, yeah, I guess she has. She was quite insistent on me coming out. Is she like that with everyone she meets? No. She's actually pretty reserved with most people. But if she meets someone special, she tends to drop that facade. Really? What makes someone special? Hard to say. I guess some people have a unique, unique quality. If she happens to see that quality in you, you're pretty much stuck with her. Ah, shit. A unique quality, huh? It's a bit weird to think someone might actually might act differently around you based on an assumption they have about you. I don't even really know what Zoe thinks she sees in me, unless I'm supposed to assume Aiden is also kinetically funny. My eyes drift downward... God damn it, stop looking at his crotch! My eyes drift downwards towards where his fly would be, realizing what I'm doing... I force my eyes back upwards to meet Aiden's gaze. So, has Zoe also seen a unique quality in you? Unfortunately, yes. We met while our parents were having a meeting, and she's been stuck to me ever since. Wow, so how long have you two known each other? About ten years, I suppose. So, did you go to high school together then? No, I went to private school while she Aiden pauses mid-sentence, Seemingly catching himself, he stares at me for a moment before he speaks again. You're actually pretty sly, aren't you? Trying to learn more about Zoe from one of her friends to raise her chances with her, huh? What? No! Maybe I should just correct him and tell him I'm gay. It might be better to avoid confusion. Sorry, I was just curious and trying to keep the conversation going. Ah, <laughs> sorry. I just thought I'd try pulling your leg a bit. You seemed a bit uncomfortable is all. He's not wrong, though I can't say I feel tense as I... I can't feel... I can't say I feel as tense as I did when we'd started touring around. I thought I'd been pretty sociable, but I must have still come across as nervous somehow. Howdy! What can I get you? Aiden walks forward, letting his eyes scan the selection they have available. Veggie kebabs, mini pot pies, and lightly sugared jelly donuts. He visibly bobs his head back and forth as if weighing the options in his mind. I think I need a minute to think. Mason, you go ahead while I decide. Uh, sure thing. Ah, shit, which one? The roasted veggie kebab, mini pot pie, or jelly-filled donut. 
kind of neat, and then forces them to join a suspiciously cultist club. <laughs> the donut! Ah! You could never go wrong with the donut. The jam filling was just the cherry on top, or on the inside. Either way, I wanted one inside me. Phrasing! 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 Just, just, phrasing! Actually, I'm gonna up my microphone sensitivity. Phrasing! Out of context as fuck! Just, phrasing. You could never go wrong with a donut. The jam filling was just the cherry on top. Or, on the inside. Either way, I wanted one inside me. Okay, that'll be two dollars, cash or card. I moved to grab my wallet, but Aiden places a hand on my shoulder to stop me. Don't worry about it. Let me treat you. Are you sure? You might be my tour guide, but you don't have to pay for me. It's not a big deal. Honestly, I want to. Aiden then orders a meat pie for himself and pays for the both of us. The two of us shift out of the line with our food and look for a spot to eat. We settle on a bench sandwiched between two club tables. Don't you think we should find somewhere a little less... busy? I'd prefer it, honestly. But we would have to go to another part of campus to avoid any crowd. There's no real worry. None of the clubs should bother us if we don't approach them. <laughs> we offer truly... Hang on, hang on. I, got, I gotta do the voice. I gotta do the voice. <clears throat> we offer truly reinventive experiences. Join us at a very quaint and remote farm where the real produce is the freedom of the self. That is definitely a cult. Maybe try avoiding eye contact, too. Yeah. Thanks again, by the way. You didn't have to pay for me. Nonsense. I'm nothing if not a gracious host. He says this proudly. I'm beginning to wonder if Aiden lied when he berated Zoe and actually does like showing off. Speaking of being a good host, do you have any classes today? Zoe and I are getting coffee later, and I'm sure she'd love it if you joined us. Coffee, huh? Can't say I've ever been a fan of the big cough. Wait, what time is it? Busting my phone out with the quickness, I see that the time has already swept past noon. Crap, Aiden, I'm sorry to do this, but I actually have to get going now if I want to make it to my class. Not a problem. Do you need me to show you where to go? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I know where it is. Well, just in case, hand me your phone real quick. I reluctantly hand Aiden my phone. He proceeds to tap away on the screen. There. Now we have each other's numbers. Just text me in case you do need end up needing help. Time to skedaddle. I'll let Zoe know you had to dash to your class, and I'll be sure to give her an earful for ditching you earlier. Ah, I appreciate it. I turn to leave and pull up my class schedule on my phone, which tells me that my class is in Hurlem Hall. <laughs> Definitely a cultist. Unfortunately, Hurlem Hall is on the other side of the campus. With how much time I have before the class starts, damn it, I'm gonna have to run. After a sprint around the fair, I got to Hurlem Hall and into the classroom with a few minutes to spare. It's a smaller classroom. Fortunately, there are still plenty of seats available, so I grab one of the chairs in the back and catch my breath. You find the classroom okay? I found it just fine, but I appreciate your offer of help. Oh my god, that is so cute. That is so cute. Glad you found it. While you're still available, you never did answer my question if you wanted to get coffee. Mm. Oh, you just reminded me. I need to sit down and actually watch Good Omens. Yeah, let's get coffee. Let's get coffee! Ah! Coffee does sound nice, and I was thinking this morning that I needed to put myself out there if I wanted to make friends. Yes, let's get bean juice! Sure, why not? I should be able to squeeze it in. Great. Text me when your class is over. I'll let Zoe know. Do you mind if I sit here? Hmm. It's time for coffee. Yes, hot bean juice. I look up from my phone to see a very slender rabbit before me. He looks down at me as he motions towards the seat next to mine. Uh, no. No, you don't mind. Hang on, we gotta, we gotta figure out a voice. The Alex voice. Let me see if it fits him. 
No, you don't mind? Or, no, you don't want me to sit here? I mean, it fits. It fits. Would you say that it fits, or should I come up with a gayer voice? Hmm. Nah, it's gay enough. Okay, it's gay enough. No, you don't mind, or... No, you don't want me to sit here. No, I don't mind. Sorry, I'm just collecting myself. I had to rush to get here on time. Really? Sleep in late or something? Something like that. So, I guess if we're gonna be seat buddies, I better ask your name. Seat buddies? I feel myself cringing at such, such a juvenile term, but it would be rude to point it out. It's Mason, and you are... Well, it's nice to meet you, Mason. My name's Quinn. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to English 101. Introduction to writing. I am your professor for this course, Mr. Breyer. The conversation between us ends as Mr. Breyer begins handing out the discu and discussing the syllabus for the course. I do my best to pay attention to the dull explanation. Psst. I know how important it is to know the rules and expectations of the class. Psst. Letting myself be distracted would not be a good way to start my academic year career as a college student. Psst. What? The rabbit looks taken aback, but quickly shifts into grinning as he slides a piece of paper toward me. Yeah, the voice fits. I roll my eyes at the bunny and take the paper from him. At first, I'm confused by the strange hieroglyphics, only to realize they are, in fact, English words. Hidden behind poor penmanship. This Mr. Briar is pretty boring, right? What? After deciphering the message, I look up at the rabbit who stares back at me expectantly with a wide grin plastered across his face. I guess he's expecting me to reply. was horrible oh my god <laughs> which one <laughs> the music is not helping yeah he's so monotone hey, what He's so monotone. <laughs> okay. I slide the note back to Quinn. He nods in agreement before scribbling something else down. I don't really get why they bother with the syllabus thing. It's always don't eat in class. Be respectful. Turn your work in on time. Everyone here is an adult, right? Do we really need reminders on how school works? It sounds like you do. I can agree with the sentiment, but I'd like to think all university students are adults and don't need this. But it's also apparent that two adults are passing notes in the back of, like, a couple of middle schoolers. We continue passing notes over the next hour while Mr. Breyer lectures about how he runs the course. Once Mr. Breyer ends his lecture, I began packing up my things, but as I turn to leave, I feel a small hand atop my shoulder. Listen, if you're not busy, I was going to go check out some books at the library. You seem like you'd be pretty fun to talk to if you opened up a little bit more. Any chance you want to go with me? I might have considered this invitation, but I already made plans with Aiden. It'd be rude to flake within an hour of making those plans. Sorry, but I can't. I already have plans. No problem. Just thought I'd see if you wanted to come with me. I'll see you around then, Mason. Definitely. I watch as the rabbit walks out the door. He seemed a bit disappointed, but we share this class, so I'm sure we'll have other chances to get to know one another. I shoot Aiden a text to let him know my class had finished, and he sends me the address of the cafe. It looks like it's about a ten minute walk. Hopefully they aren't waiting too long. Coffee is always a good idea. I like that. Hang on, I, I want to try to read these. I want 
I'm gonna try to read some of these. Ah, uh, yes, bean juice. Bean juice is always a good idea. We got American bean juice. Cap of bean juice. A cafe bean juice and a bean juice macchiato. And tea. Americano. OMG, they serve me here. Hi, yeah, I'd like a pumpkin spice latte. Following the directions on my phone made finding the cafe a cinch. However, after looking around, I don't see Zoe or Aiden seated anywhere. It is possible that I just beat them here, so I might as well order something and grab a table while I wait. Well, hello. 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 You look cute. It's a Mr. Meow Meow. Um, what voice? If pumpkin spice latte is actually good. It is good. A pumpkin spice latte is actually really good. It's really fucking good. Okay, but seriously, what voice should this should this fucker have? Like it, it tastes like pumpkin pie. It tastes like happiness. It tastes like pure joy and happiness. Give him the voice of a god, cause that's how I'm gonna be revering revering him. Okay. You okay there? You're looking a little lost. The barista at the front counter motions me over. I must look like an idiot just leering from the front counter. Getting closer, I can see that he is indeed a larger male, but his arms look sturdy and capable. His smile somehow seems warm, although for some reason his eyes keep flicking downward. No, I'm not lost. I'm just meeting someone here and was checking if they'd gotten lost here yet. I see... Well, the cute ones are always taken anyway. Can I get you a coffee while you wait? I'm sorry. No, I'm not taken. Can I get your number? Yes, please. I'm not a huge coffee drinker, so I pick something uncomplicated sounding off the menu. After taking the money for my order, the barista proceeds to quickly whip my drink together. Meanwhile, I snag a nearby table. It's only after I'm sitting down that it dawns on me. Did he just call me cute? I mean, he's not too bad looking himself now that I'm thinking about it. He definitely seems to have an air of maturity about him, although that might just be because he looks a few years older than me. Not even a minute and bro is already flirting. What a great start, right? And Damien, and I agree with that sentiment. I agree with that sentiment, Damien. Order for Mason. Snapped out of my daze, I see that the barista man I was daydreaming about is standing before me with my drink in hand. Aren't customers usually supposed to get up to get their coffee? Usually, but today's a slow day and I could use a break. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. I guess I should be flattered you're choosing to spend it with me then. So then, I guess I should know the name of my esteemed coffee brewer. It's Elliot. It says right here on my apron. Is the font too small? Elliot begins fumbling with his apron as if concerned the stitching work wasn't done adequately. Oh, you're right. Not sure I didn't notice that before. <laughs> That's fine. For all you know, I could have been wearing somebody else's apron. So this friend of your meeting, are they anybody? Are they somebody special? First, I ponder that he might what he might be meeting, but my thoughts are immediately dispelled by his tail slightly caressing my leg. I'm not even sure how I should be answering this question right now. Ah! Yeah, bitch, get in line. He's mine. He's mine. I haven't even known him for. I haven't known him. I've known him for less than three minutes. And already, I would do anything for this man. I swear, I don't have issues. Always watching. Yeah, I, I definitely have issues. Just kidding, no I don't, except I do. It's auto mods. But seriously, which one? I just, I just, I just wanna, I just wanna. You know this novel more than me. He's yours. Girl! Out of anyone we know, Aiden, Mason, Elliot, Quinn, Zoe, who's my favorite. Y'all can keep him, I'm favorite. taking Quinn. 
Uh, this one. But that, that, like, the question still isn't being answered. Okay. Interesting. That's certainly a practical way of doing it. So then, pray tell, what are you looking for in a partner exactly? I, uh... Why does this feel dangerous? Something about his eyes narrowing at me. I feel like if I say the wrong thing, I could find myself in a truly precarious engagement. Although maybe that wouldn't be such a bad thing. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. Men. Oh ho! Well, th Oh, shit. Couldn't, didn't read that. Oh, well, if you don't mind me asking that, how do you feel about older... There you are. Appearing suddenly, Zoe interrupts our conversation and pulls me into a hug. She sure is friendly, considering we just met today. I hope you weren't waiting long. Ran as far as I could, though. I see you've already met Elliot. Hopefully he hasn't made you too uncomfortable. That's ridiculous. I'd never make anyone uncomfortable. Really? Because I recall a certain... Musclehead almost decked you for coming on too strong. The art of flirting is all about timing and targeting. You have to recognize who won't appreciate it and who will. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. Elliot rubs his tail against my leg one more time before drawing it back to his side. The panther's attention finally shifts off me and back to Zoe. But enough about me, Zoe. It's so good to see you. I had no idea Mason was a friend of yours. We met today at the campus. I'm his resident assistant. Right, you always are busy with those extracurriculars. I hope you at least had a good time visiting your family before coming back. It was... Okay. I might tell you about it some other time. The two of them look towards me briefly, and it suddenly feels like I'm intruding on a private conversation. I'm not even sure how to break the ice on this sudden awkwardness. Luckily, due to a wolf in shining slacks coming to my rescue, I won't have to. I see you both are here already, though I don't recall Elliot being invited to our little get-together. Oh, you wound me, Aiden. Here I thought we'd become good friends. Come on, Aiden, what are the odds that Elliot wasn't going to be here? I agree, though I still think he should probably return to behind the counter. I'm still unsure what kind of establishment you're trying to run, but your employees are liable to slack off if they keep seeing their boss engaging in chit-chat more often than working. Sorry, Ellie. The group, the grump is having a bit of a rough day. Large panther sighs before removing himself from his seat. He motions for the two to go ahead while he trudges back towards the counter. No! No, come back! That was a bit rude, wasn't it? Sorry, I just have a bit of a headache. It's just easier for me to keep my head on within a smaller crowd. I'll apologize to him later. You have to forgive Aiden. He's an introvert. Aiden simply chuckles at this while the panda continues to explain away his rudeness. Jay was just exhausting for him after being around all of the people of the, from the club fair. So it's just better for him to be around fewer people so he can recharge. I guess I can understand that, though I'm not sure why you'd want to get coffee then. I value a routine, and we get coffee every Monday and Friday. Regardless of how I'm feeling, I have no desire to deviate from that. He gets pretty anal if someone knocks him off schedule. But enough about Aiden, tell us about you, Mason. Okay, anything specific you want to know? Hmm, what's your zodiac sign? Really, Zoe? Really, Zoe? We're starting with astrology. We can't all we can't all be a skeptical Aquarius like you. That's why you have your Aries friend to balance you out. Aiden simply rolls his eyes at this, and they both look at me as if waiting for me to answer. I'm not overly into astrology, but I'm pretty sure I'm a cancer. Not that there's much to be interested in, it's all just a nonsense appeal to tribalism. The incessant need to belong to a group. It's not even, it's not even remotely scientific. Yet some people still put stock in it like it's gospel. There was a guy I met my sophomore year that lived exclusively through his horoscope readings. Aw. Only if you spoke this passionately all the time. Then people might not think you're such a stick in the mud. Unlikely. I'm constantly reminded by one of my employees of how much of a drag he is. Surprised by the sudden addition to the conversation, I turn to see Elliot looming over me with Aiden and Zoe's drink orders. He looks down at me with a smile warmer than the coffee he's serving. Yes, well, I'm sure you know how much I value the individual opinions of that particular employee. 
Well, if you tried a bit harder, others might hold a better opinion of you. I'd rather not project a false image of when I'm supposed to be spending my time in leisure. I spend enough of my time doing that for business affairs. Business affairs? I'm frequently negotiating deals with several affiliates of my father's company in the local area. Though I consider any involvements at the university to be a business affair, as it's a matter of maintaining a public image. The gears in my brain are trying to process what Aiden is saying, but it seems a bit beyond me. So, you have a job alongside school. Aiden's father is the CEO of a major tech corporation. He just runs point of for a lot of contract for a lot of contacts around Elmwood. Wow, so if you've already got such an important job, why even go to college? Because my grandfather was one of the earliest graduating classes from Elmwood. My father followed in his footsteps, and I'm doing the same. After getting a degree, I intend to transfer to an Ivy League school for my higher education. It's impressive, and I can't really help but be a little jealous. This wolf really seems to have it all figured out. Meanwhile, I'm just running around without a clue of what I'm doing. The more I try talking, the more I talk with Aiden, the more that princey vibe I got before shifts towards an entitled tone. So, Mason, I've got a slightly more intrusive question. I'm currently working on a bit of a theory. Sure, go for it. Are you gay? Wow! Wow! That is a hell of a question. <laughs> that is certainly a question. That's a uh, pretty out of, out of nowhere. What is this theory for? Don't worry about that. Just a harmless curiosity, really. It's not harmless. I've got a theory myself that Zoe might be into me. But I guess this is the golden ticket to make things clear on that front. I am. Though I'm a bit curious what this theory of yours is. Huh. What are the odds? Sorry if that was too personal. Though, I won't lie that I'm excited to have another gay friend. I'm processing bullshit. I'm gonna have to process some bullshit during the ad. Starting any minute. Sorry, but another? As in plural. As in more than one. Wow. That is something. She laughs this off, though I get a bit curious looking over to the wolf to my right. Do I dare even ask? I must have been looking at him for too long because Zoe answered that question that was on my mind. Aiden's gay too, if you're wondering. And hopelessly single. We know that Elliot is gay. So is this girl just collecting gay guys like Pokemon? <laughs> Zoe! That's not at all appropriate. Oh, please, Aiden. It's the 21st century. Sexuality shouldn't be such a taboo conversation. Besides, isn't honesty the best policy in business? That's quite rich, considering... Fine. If we're being completely transparent, I am indeed bisexual. I'm... Hopelessly single, as Zoe puts it, because I've never considered romance a priority. Not that she'd understand, given she's never been outside of a relationship since I've known her. The two begin to bicker excessively over their romantic con conquests, or lack thereof. Aiden said before that they'd known each other for years, and I can't help but question how they couldn't have possibly tried to kill the kill one another in that time. Thankfully, the argument eventually ends thanks to an interjection by Elliot. Hey gang, as much as I appreciate your business, I need to close up a little early today. So I'm sorry, but I'm gonna need you all to pack it up. Oh, that's alright. Is everything okay? Thank you, Elliot! Yeah, just got to get some things from the ex. You know how it is. Right. Well, if you need anything, just let us know. Of course, and thanks for stopping by. Mason, it was very nice meeting you. I hope you come back again sometime. Baby, I will come back to you every fucking day. Definitely. I didn't, tr didn't, get, I didn't get to try one of those mini cakes you have on display, so I'll be back for sure. Yeah, I'll hold you to that, then. Take care. The Panther then returns to the cash register with Aiden, following him to pay for the drinks. Hey, listen, this is kind of fun, even though it ended up running a bit short. Aiden and I actually need to split in a little while. Anyway, Aaron's and all that. Seriously, though, if you ever need anything, just let me know. Especially if you want to hang out again. 
Anything for you, Elliot. Sure, I wouldn't be opposed to that. And we're going to leave off here tonight. Yes, I'm a simp. Yes, I'm a simp. Well, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.